Pastor Troy. Hey, Pastor Luke. Good afternoon. Or whatever time of day good, you're good watching day. this. Good yeah. day. Good day to you, sir. It, it is good to be good to be with you. Yeah. Uh, we are continuing onward through the Apostles' Creed, yes. second article of the Apostles' Creed. So in our catechisms, we are on page 176. And so last week we talked about the first paragraph of Luther's explanation of the second article of the Creed, who Jesus is. Today we're going to talk about what Jesus is does, what he's yeah. done, what he continues to do, and what he will do. So go ahead on page 176, I'll read the second article of the Creed and then the second part of Luther's explanation. And I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. What does this mean? I'll go ahead and read the first part. I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood and with his innocent suffering and death. And so we'll pause there. Uh, that paragraph is the one we're going to be looking at today. There you go. So if you take a look at uh, the top of page 177, the central thought, as Christians, we confess that Jesus became our Lord by dying on the cross in order to rescue us from our captivity to sin, death, and the devil. So if we take a look at question 162, what are we saying when we confess that Jesus has redeemed us? Redeemed is kind of a churchy word that we use a lot. It means to buy back. To buy back or, yeah. or to rescue. Uh, right. And that's uh, in the answer here. We acknowledge that Jesus has rescued and reclaimed. All our words, redeemed, yeah. rescued, reclaimed. Reclaimed us from powers we cannot overcome. So Jesus saves us by redeeming us and reclaiming us. Rescuing us. Rescuing us. All yes. three, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. For, but then the question in 163 says, why do we need to be redeemed, rescued, reclaimed? And it says, well, we live under the uh, tyranny of three things, sometimes called the unholy trinity. Yes, uh, sin, death, and the devil. Yeah. The unholy trinity. Yeah. We are, in our sinful nature, we are enslaved to these things. They right. are tyrants over us. Yes. But Jesus, and we can't save ourselves from these things, but Jesus comes and saves us from them through his death and resurrection. Yeah, we, and, and so, but question 164 then talks about, look, th this is, um, we cannot decide not to be a sinner mm -hmm. because we're born, we inherit sin, yeah. original sin. Yeah, everything about us is, is sinful um, apart from Jesus. Yeah. And even uh, we could add to the holy, unholy trinity, sin, death, and devil, Jesus actually saves us from ourselves, too, because in our own... Well, we are sinners, so yeah, I think that yeah. falls into the first part. Yeah, yeah. So in our own selfish nature, sin sinful nature, Jesus saves us from that as well. Yeah, so when we talked about the first article about God the Father, who is the maker, the creator of all things, then, then we go into the second article and we say Jesus is true God and true man. He's our redeemer mm -hmm. who rescues and reclaims us because Adam and Eve fell, it's called the fall, mm -hmm. sin is the problem, and then we need to be saved, or s the solution is Jesus. He's more than a solution, but. Yeah, and so the next question, question 165, why did God send his son to rescue us? Why did God save us? Because he is a God of steadfast love and mercy. Mm -hmm. One of the videos we use the word chesed. Yes. <laughs> uh, and so because and the catechism says he had compassion on us. Mm -hmm. You know, God created us and it breaks his heart when we fall into sin, when we sin. And God loves us so much. He loves that which he has created. So he's not going to just let it destroy itself or let it be destroyed. He's going to save it. And that's what he has done by sending Jesus to save us. And so God not only says, I love you, he also does I love you stuff, mm -hmm. right? I think that's the way we'd say. Yep. So, so 166, how did Jesus rescue me and you and every person watching this video from our sin? He did this by dying on the cross. Yeah. He took the penalty for our sin because, because of our sin, all of us deserve death. 
Right. The book of Romans says the wages of sin is death. So Jesus, he was a human being. We talked about this in the last few video that Jesus was truly human, just like you and me, but without sin. Right. So did Jesus deserve to die? No, he no. did not deserve to die. And when, so when Jesus was murdered on the cross, uh, it's, we could say that death reached too far. Death, yes. death claimed someone that death did not have a claim, death did not have a claim on Jesus because Jesus had never sinned. Yeah, I'm looking here, we're in the sanctuary and over here this window where Jesus is being baptized by John the Baptist. Jesus, unlike you and me and every other person who's baptized, who enters into the water a sinner, mm -hmm. Jesus is sinless, mm -hmm. he is holy. So, so Jesus dies on the cross on Good Friday, but that's not the end of the story. No, uh, so Jesus destroys death and sin on the cross, Yes, but that's not all he does. And it was dark, right? The whole sky went black in the middle mm -hmm. of the day. Yep. But then the sun shines. Uh, three days light. later, on that first Easter Sunday, Jesus rose from the dead. And so Jesus not only destroys death, defeats death, he also gives life by first being brought back to life himself. Yeah, and so one of the things I think that uh, question 168 is, is pretty cool how it says this. How did Jesus rescue me from death? He put death... <laughs> To death. Yes. So, uh, sin and death and the power of the devil ultimately goes into Jesus on the cross to die. Mm -hmm. Yes, and then, again, also not just by his death, but he also rose again from the dead. Yeah, and as we were talking about this, so the cross isn't the place where death merely goes to be wounded or you're going to get a time out, death. It <laughs> yeah. goes there to die to be destroyed yeah mm -hmm. and the devil like goes there ultimately to be mm -hmm. destroyed yep and then it's not just that death is destroyed but then the opposite of death is life mm -hmm. the opposite of darkness is light and jesus is the life and the light of the world uh he's risen so we can never forget easter either yeah so jesus through his own death and resurrection destroys death but also undoes death yeah and so for all who believe in him even though we're more than likely going to die unless Jesus comes back first. Right. Jesus is going to undo the death of all who believe in him. So death is sad. It death is. hurts. But we, and J.R.R. Tolkien has a great way of saying that, that, you know, because Christ is risen, all the sad things in the end come untrue. Mm -hmm. Awesome stuff. Yep. You know, so the small catechism, and one of the things in question 169, it says that uh, Jesus' resurrection um, what is so comforting about that? And we say, well, you know, I guess it's comforting, but there are other words that came to mind for me beyond comforting, but like it's invigorating, it's inspiring, it's vindicating. Exciting. It's exciting, and you had an image that came to mind that yeah. may not be for all of our viewers, <laughs> but we'll put yeah. it into the yeah, video. Yeah, the idea or well, the, the truth, the reality that Jesus rose from the dead and that he is going to raise us from the dead. No, it gets me excited, inspired. I, I feel like William Wallace. I'm ready, I'm ready to go charge. And we'll show battle. the picture of, of the actor Mel Gibson portraying yeah. William Wallace and Brave. Re ready to charge in the battle for Jesus. Exciting. Yeah. So, so it's this thing gets you fired up. Yeah. It is yeah. exciting because I mean we all go through terrible stuff in this world, and that's hard and difficult. But as Christians, we know that it's not going to last forever. There is something better on the horizon when Jesus comes back and raises us back to life. Yeah, so for all those people who fall asleep in Jesus, that's the way Christians can talk about death, whether that's my grandpa or, God forbid, my wife or children, or if Lord wills, I have grandchildren, mm -hmm. they will live again, mm -hmm. not just to be in heaven, but their body will be raised mm -hmm. because Christ is risen. Awesome stuff. It's exciting. Yeah. All right. We got a technical point here on 170 that, that we, about the state of humiliation. To clarify, what is the state of humiliation? It's basically Jesus being fully man and, and in some way limiting his godness. He's still fully God, but he doesn't. He chooses not to use his divine powers. Like he just sets them aside. So one of the things when I was younger, at least, and I would think about, oh, Jesus, state of humiliation. He was embarrassed. He, oh, he was humiliated. No, it has nothing to do with that. Yeah, Jesus was not embarrassed. <laughs> he chose not to use his divine nature. He humbled himself for our sake, for right. your sake. Yeah.
Yes, exactly. So I think that wraps up that first section. All right, well, let's move on to uh, the next section of the second article of the Creed, or the Apostles' Creed, page 188. And so, again, with the explanation, first paragraph, who Jesus is, second paragraph, what Jesus does. And this paragraph is really our response, my response right. to Jesus, what yeah. he, who he is and what he's done for, right. for me, for all of us. So how does Martin Luther say it? <laughs> that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness, innocence, and blessedness. Just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity. This is most certainly true. Amen. Amen. Yeah. And that, that first line there under the central thoughts, really apart from Jesus, apart from Easter, our lives are meaningless without some sense of purpose. But Jesus gives us purpose. Easter gives us meaning to this life. Yeah, like we, if, if we don't confess that Christ is risen, risen from what? Well, from death, mm -hmm. so Easter, Good Friday, then as the scriptures say, and St. Paul says, we are most of all to be pitied because mm -hmm. we don't have any hope, but we have hope because of Jesus, because he's risen. Yep. So if you take a look at question 176 there, for what purpose has Christ freed me from sin, sin, death, and the devil? Well, Jesus did all this to be my Lord. In other words, so that I might live with him and for him in peace and joy now and forever. So there are awesome things about Jesus' death and resurrection, about Easter for us today. It's not just someday in the future when we get to right. be with him uh, in the new creation, when he raises us from the dead, but also it impacts our life today. So, and we're saying because Jesus is real and because he's risen, peace and joy are real things. Yes. Whether you feel peaceful or joyful mm -hmm. or not. Yeah. For the Christian, peace and joy are realities. They are truths, as you just said, whether or not we feel them Because or not. Jesus is true. We have peace because God has made peace with us through Jesus. We yeah. have joy because Jesus has forgiven us he has given us life and salvation. So, but one of the things that we have this, and we've talked about, so there are things that are true right now, mm -hmm. but there are other things that we're waiting yes. to see, to get here. So you may, and I may not always feel, especially peaceful, peaceful or joyful or happy, mm -hmm. or I'm grieving, mm -hmm. but that's part of being a human being. Yep. And it's okay, yep. but it doesn't change anything who Jesus is or what he has done and is doing and will do. So we have peace and joy now, but there will be a day when Jesus returns where we will experience it fully. Like we right. won't experience sorrow or sadness or death or sin or any of these other terrible things anymore. Right. We'll be completely peace and joy in these things, all in, centered in Jesus. Yeah, there's a, there's a song by a group called Remedy Drive. It's called Daylight. And part of the chorus is Hold On. Daylight is coming. It's coming. Jesus is coming back. Hold on. He is coming. Yeah. Yeah, we're facing the window over here, the resurrection. Yeah. Uh, cool yeah. stuff. And that is the hope that we have as Christians, that we will be raised uh, to life again, eternal life with Jesus, uh, life, again, free from sin, death, devil, all these terrible things. And man, I can't wait for that. And we remind one another, hold on. Yep. It's okay. I know yep. it's scary. Yeah. It's okay. I'm here with you. Life. Daylight's coming. Life is hard today. Yeah but it won't last forever. And then, yeah, go ahead, 180, well, is that Yeah, question next? 180. Yeah. So what is the basis for my confession and confidence that I will live forever in his kingdom? Well, the answer they have here, the resurrection of Christ is the basis for everything that we confess in this article. In short, in one word, you could say the answer to this question is Easter. Yes. Easter. And I think as I continue to learn what it means to follow Jesus, you know, rather than worrying about, okay, starting with the creation or what happens when Jesus comes back, I'm going to start with right now and say, it's true that Jesus is risen. Mm -hmm. And then go from there. And, it, and it's, it changes everything. Yeah. Because of what Jesus has done on that first Easter, he has given us immense purpose and worth in this life. Yes. And so as Christians, we can say, we say this on Easter, but we can say it really every day of our lives. Hallelujah, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, that's probably a... We got one last little bonus one, thing. One, one more bonus? Uh, well, it's a great oh, way yeah, to end, yeah. but, I, <laughs> but there is a title here that yeah. I think is important. 182, uh, what, uh, what does it mean 
that our Lord Jesus is called the Christ. Well, Christ is the same word as Messiah. Meshiach, if we were going to be yeah. very Hebrew about it, it. And it means the anointed one. The chosen one. The chosen one. Yeah. yeah. So Jesus is the chosen one. He's the one who's chosen to save. Mm -hmm. How does he do that? By dying, by being raised on the third day, by reigning and returning. Amen. That's it. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll wrap it up here with the second article of the Creed. We'll, we yeah. will, the next video, we'll, we'll start tackling the third article. Awesome. Yeah. Until next time. Take care. See ya.